Hello everyone, welcome to Techverse. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can make a power supply. It's a switch mode power supply with any desired output voltage point directly from the mains. The power supply is based on the UC3842 switch mode power supply IC. So, all the component values and the connections are shown. So, let's go through the working and the input you have your mains. There's a fuse. And an NTC dummy star for limiting the inrush current. There is also a filter made up of this capacitor, this common mode choke conductor, and this capacitor. So, this eliminates the high frequencies from the power supply from interfering with the low frequency mains. So, there is also a, some high voltage capacitors which establish a ground potential in between them. So, then it's followed by a full bridge rectifier. So uh, here you have your capacitor DC which is filtered by this bulk capacitor. So there's a small there's a distance resistor which discharges the bulk capacitor when the power supply is disconnected from the mains. So the IC receives its power directly from the mains through this diode and this high wattage resistor. So then VCC pin 7, the voltage is kept still at about 18 volts by this inner diode. And there's a small storage capacitor for keeping the voltage steady at the in input VCC pin of the IC. So all the other connections are shown connecting 2 and 5 to ground on the negative rail. Connecting 3 to the negative rail through a reserve recoverant capacitor. All the other connections are shown. So this is the frequency determining resistor as well as the 4.7 nanofarads capacitor. All the connections are shown. So the output pin 6 goes to the gate of the MOSFET through this 32 ohms resistor. There is also a gate voltage limiting zener diode of 18 volts to protect the MOSFET from over voltage across its gate and source. There is also a current sensing resistor which is 0 0.56 ohms. So this limits the maximum current drawn by the MOSFET on the primary side which also acts as a power limiting resistor. You can change the values of the resistor for any desired amounts of current on the primary side. So the MOSFET is the IRF840 but if you want more power you can use the IRF460 or 450 since they can handle up to about 20 amperes. Just ensure that they are written at least more than 500 volts. You can also use the 20 and 60 MOSFET. So the primary turns are shown. The turns ratio between the primary and secondary is first one. So on the primary side you can have 90 turns and on the secondary side you can have about 52 turns. So when the MOSFET is turned on by a high signal from the pin 6, so current will flow through the primary winding into ground. So when the MOSFET turns on, all the energy stored in the core will be transferred to the secondary side where it is rectified by this high frequency down and filtered by these two bulk capacitors. There is also a small minimum load resistor on the secondary side to ensure that the output remains steady. So there is also voltage the regulation achieved by the precision reference IC tier for that one. So there is a Resistor dependent network. So when 2.5 volts develop across this node, the tier for that one will begin production and this will allow current to flow from the positive output on the secondary side through this resistor through this LED. So this LED will be fed when there is voltage regulation. Also through the internal infrared LED of the copra through the tier for that one I see and to the negative rail of the output side. So when this happens so it will shut the feedback pin 1 of the IC to ground and so this will limit the duty cycle at pin 6 to keep the output at the desired output voltage. So the output voltage is directly proportional to the secondary windings. So for the optocopper you can use the PC817, it's very common and reliable. It can handle up to 80 volts and a current of about 50 milliamps. So that's all about this switch mode pass or Also I forget there's a small snubber network made up by this high frequency 
choosing diode the UF4007 and this capacitor. So what happens is when the MOSFET switches off, any voltage spikes generated will be shortened across the primary winding with this high frequency diode. So the capacitor will charge and then it will be discharged by this resistor. So ensure that the capacitor is large enough to handle the heat generated when it is being charged and discharged. So don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more amazing tutorials and projects and hit the notifications bell for updates about future uploads. Have a nice time.